Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, something is not right in our solar system. Our planet Earth seems to have created a partner that's a little bit above its mass. As a matter of fact, a lot more than its mass. We're now orbiting what seems to be an intermediate black hole. Our moon has become a black hole and today we're going to talk about this scenario that will probably never happen, but it's nevertheless fun to explore. Welcome to What The Math. So, what happened to our moon? Well, I guess we'll never know. But what seems to be an Earth-Moon system is now a black hole Earth system. If I accelerate time here, you'll see that they're actually orbiting around one another and the black hole is creating quite a lot of really cool um, effects of bending light and blue shifting lights around our planet Earth. As a matter of fact, if I were to actually come closer to Earth, you would see that um, the way we perceive the galaxy and the universe would change dramatically. Everything here would be blue shifted. So Earth as we know it is a lot different. This is kind of what things would look like from our planet Earth, including of course our sun that would be blue shifted as well, and the sunlight would appear very different. Now the thing is, our planet Earth can probably survive at this distance from this black hole and not fall apart into little pieces, but the tidal effects here, along with the fact that we have so many other unpredictable effects coming from this black hole would very likely mean that things will not be fine on our planet Earth. If you've watched the movie Interstellar, one of the planets there has these tremendous effects. One of them was the mega tsunamis, which we'll of course experience pretty much every single day. Tsunamis will be so large that they will very likely uh, wash hundreds of kilometers ashore and the earthquakes and the volcanoes that will be created by these tidal effects will be tremendous as well. Except for that, there will be also um, uh, an effect known as time dilation. Time on our planet Earth will not actually be the same as time on other planets in this solar system. And we will basically appear moving um, in slow motion to people outside. So if I was on Mars and if I were to look at Earth everything would appear that like it's moving in slow motion. But in Interstellar, that effect was ridiculously high. Like one second there was something like two hours, whereas here it would not be as dramatic. For that effect to be so dramatic, this black hole has to spin really, 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 really fast. And it has to be also very, very massive. This black hole is only intermediate size and it's not spinning at all. So the time dilation on our planet Earth would be maybe about 1.8 to about two times uh, the normal time. In other words, we would be moving in slow motion by about a half. Not too bad, but still quite unusual. As you can see, there's a lot of other effects that are basically the bending of the light and the um, Earth completely disappearing behind black hole right now. And of course, the blue shift effects that you can kind of see if you come really, really close to this black hole, which I'm going to do right now, just to show you what our planet Earth looks like from essentially the event horizon of this black hole. So let's stop time, get to the event horizon. And from this event horizon, let's actually try to find our beautiful planet Earth. I think it's actually right there. This blue spot that's sort of stretched and twisted is what our planet Earth would appear like from this region. And this is I believe the Orion Nebula, which is normally red, but in this case has a very strange and very unusual color. And yeah, you can see that this is Earth because it's moving relatively fast compared, compared to other objects here. Now, so this is all pretty interesting, obviously not realistic, but still very unusually uh, beautiful. And this is actually something I always wondered about when I was younger. What would it actually look like if we had a black hole orbiting around our planet Earth, or if we orbited a very massive black hole um, in our planet, or on our planet. And um, here, the reality is that um, this particular black hole, if it was actually this massive and was in our solar system, would require everything to orbit around it, or fall into it pretty much within a few hours. Uh, okay, maybe not a few hours, but definitely within a few days. Uh, most of the planets would accelerate dramatically toward this black hole and would get sucked in. And I'm going to demonstrate it for you in a few seconds. And if I were to stand on the surface of our planet like I'm doing right now, 
there is that massive black hole in the skies. It would essentially be covering a huge proportion of the skies, including um, very likely covering a huge proportion of our sunlight. So our planet on average would be a lot colder, a lot less friendly to life, and very likely not develop any life at all because these tidal effects would be so dramatic that they would wipe out life uh, unless it was extremely resilient to, um, to live on such a planet. And there is the uh, black hole set, I guess. And look at that, sunrise. Now, let's actually maybe stay... And let's actually wait for the, the rise of the black hole from the horizon, from the other side, and see what it looks like from this angle as well. And look at that. We just kind of missed it. It was really, really fast. Um, but because the black hole is so black, it would essentially be kind of difficult to see... Um, due to the refraction of the light in the skies, you would basically see emptiness. There would be no stars whatsoever. That's because they're covered by this black hole. And there it is, and it's in all of its glory. And anyway, the, all of this looks very majestic and very beautiful. You can kind of see the aurora here and the edge of the black hole event horizon showing in this particular picture. Uh, but what I would actually like to find out now is what would really happen if this massive black hole was at the distance of our moon, located in our solar system. Let's actually explore this in Universe Sandbox and escape from this hypothetical system. Look at this beautiful black hole one last time and at Earth orbiting around it. And let's go to Universe Sandbox. And so what we're going to do in our solar system is we're going to go to Earth and place a black hole that's around the size that you just uh, saw in uh, in Space Engine. We're going to see what's going to happen when we place uh, an intermediate-sized black hole right next to our planet Earth. And let's actually just decelerate time, make it more realistic. And yep, that's what I expected. Earth starts orbiting really fast and essentially starts falling apart into little tiny pieces. Now this is like real time, this is one second per second, and you can see that what you saw in the Space Engine was not very realistic. This is a lot more likely to happen. The tidal effects are so strong that not only do we get tsunamis, we get pieces of Earth literally flying off the surface and creating what's going to be a ring around this black hole. And that's not it. If I were to zoom out, and if I were to actually accelerate time, you would notice that everything in our solar system is going to change its course, including our sun. Everything is going to actually get sucked into this black hole. Because such a huge mass suddenly appeared in our solar system, things will now be a little bit different. And interestingly, you can actually see fragments of Earth flying off this location. They're actually creating this very beautiful um, accretion disk around the black hole because our Earth has now been shredded into little pieces and is kind of sort of gone. But other planets will come do the same and the accretion uh, disk will probably grow larger. But the interesting part is that you can definitely see these fragments flying off at ridiculously high speeds and being very, very, very hot, which is essentially what a lot of black holes that are that massive create. Pretty much every single time something massive comes next to them. And so as we observe this black hole with the Earth uh, accretion disk around it, Let's just wait for something else to make it here and to be completely destroyed by um, essentially this black hole that used to be the moon. And within a few hours, you can kind of see that both the Mercury and the Sun are basically flying toward this black hole at a ridiculously high speed. The velocity of the Sun is already several thousand kilometers per second. Same for Mercury. And they're coming closer and closer. And let's actually see what happens when they get to this black hole and possibly stop this video here. And here we go. The sun is going to grow larger and larger. I'm guessing Mercury will probably come here first, but maybe not. And so here comes the sun. It literally falls apart as it approaches the black hole, creates a huge amount of fragments because the tidal effects uh, spaghettify the sun. And here it comes. It's going to collide with this black hole, the moon, and possibly disappear. 
and the sun is gone. It was sucked into the black hole and disappeared forever. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to explore this hypothetical idea of a black hole, the moon, in our solar system, but also give you an idea that out there, somewhere out there, there are these intermediate black holes that um, are not super massive and are bigger than stellar black holes. And we've found at least one of these very recently in a global Earth cluster known as 47 Tucane. Uh, this black hole here has a mass of 26,000 masses of sun, or actually 26,001 because it just sucked in the sun. But we know that uh, they can get as large as a million masses of sun and they're created in a very unusual way in global Earth clusters by basically being absorbed um, or absorbing thousands and thousands of different stars. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and likes space sciences and sciences in general. And come back here tomorrow to learn something else about space, universe, or science. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.